Animal traps are the focus of this episode of a program called Animals Matter. Chris Baker of a group called Trap Free Oregon demonstrates four types of animal traps during this program sponsored by SOARS, Southern Oregon Animal Rights Society. There's basically five different types of traps. There's a cage trap, which I do not have here. It's, it's, it's one of those live catch, have a heart trap things that they, they catch animals in. They, if they're doing it for fur trapping, they'll catch the animal, then they'll pull it out, and then they'll kill it, and then they sell it to the fur trade. So it's a little bit nicer. It's, it doesn't cause the pain that some of these other traps do. I've also got here what's called a conner bear trap, which is what they call an instant kill trap used for beaver and a lot of aquatic animals. I have a foothold trap over here, which I'm going to demonstrate as well, which actually closes on the, on the animal's uh, foot or leg. I have a snare, which is very, very commonly used for catching... Uh, for catching um, coyotes and other animals like the feral dogs, feral pigs, things like that. And then I have a dog-proof uh, raccoon trap here as well. I'm going to demonstrate first what they call the conner bear trap. This is one that they would set very often in the shallow water of a pond or a stream because the, uh, the animal that they're trying to catch goes in and out of the water in certain areas and they can see where the animal is going to go in and out by its, its a little slide. They'll set this thing up right by that, that slide so when the animal slides down into the water, it gets caught in this trap. I'm going to come right down here in front. Now this one is mostly set. I've still got these, these safety catches on, which I am going to release now, so I'm going to be very careful because trust me, this thing hurts when it gets on, if it catches you, and I've done it, I've done it a couple times to myself. This one has an opening through here that the animal will swim through. They'll put some brush and stuff on both sides of it so that, um, so that the animal has no choice but to go through directly through it. They'll put it just under the surface of the water, maybe two or three inches under the surface of the water, and these are very, very big, very strong springs which are going to close this, this trap over the animal's uh, neck. So the animal comes swimming through like this, and what they do is they touch this little trigger here, which sets the darn thing off, and there is absolutely no way that a human being can, clo can, can reset this trap with the, with the strength of their own hands. You need to have a very special tool, which is made specifically for this, to compress these springs to reset this trap. If your dog is caught in this trap, because a lot of dogs like to play in the shallow water of streams and ponds, if your dog is caught in this trap and, it, and it, 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 there's literally nothing you can do unless you happen to have one of these things with you, basically all people do is they lay down with their dog and wait for it to die, comforting it the whole time. All right, so that's the what they call a conibear trap. This bad boy here is what's called a foothold trap, and this is probably the most common trap out there. This one is the one that, you, that you've seen you know, all your life for catching bear and stuff like that. These do not have teeth on them anymore. They have smooth jaws because it's considered more humane. It, all it does is close with an amazing amount of, of, of force and pressure on the animal's leg. What they do is they dig a small hole, they bury it, they put some pine needles and a little bit of dirt on top of it. They attach this to a, a, a tree or a rock or something or a log. Animal comes walking down the trail. Sometimes they'll put bait near it. Theoretically, they're not supposed to put it within 15 feet of something like this, but the animal will come along sniffing, sniffing, sniffing for this, and they'll put this right in the middle of the trail very often. The animal will come along and they'll step on it and wait for it, close on their, on their leg. If a bird of prey like an eagle or a, um, a hawk gets caught in something like this, which happens way too frequently, these jaws will, will literally crush the leg bone in this animal, and it, there's no way for that animal to survive in the wild after that. So that's the... This one is actually quite easy to reset. So if your dog does get caught, on, caught in this, you just step on those two jaws there, and this thing will open up and dog can get out. Very often the dog will be traumatized, but won't be seriously injured when, when, if you pull them out quickly out of something like this. This one is called a dog-proof uh, raccoon trap. The nice thing about this is this is the very, very strong spring here. There's a little loop of wire that comes up here. The animal, the animal, the reason it's called dog proof is because the dog can stick its nose in there or the paw in there all at once and push, 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 and it's not going to go. What the, what the trapper will do is they'll put a little piece of food on that little, there's a little bar inside there, and the animal actually has to reach in, grab it, and pull it out, which is something a dog can't do. But a raccoon is very good at it. And then this spring goes like that. 
and it catches their paw inside there and they are restrained until the trapper comes to get them. The fourth trap I brought is called a snare. This is a piece of stainless steel aircraft cable. <laughs> I have no idea what the tensile strength of this is, but it's very, very, very strong. Very often, what, mostly what they'll do is they'll suspend this under the bottom wire of a barbed wire fence where it's obvious that animals are passing back and forth underneath there. And they'll put some brush or rocks on both sides. The animal will come along, get caught in that. They'll put their head through it. And as they go, it gets tighter and tighter. And it eventually will strangle them. Or at least they'll be restrained until the, the, the trapper can get back. This type of trap catches all kinds of non-target animals. It catches dogs and cats and, and uh, baby cows, baby deer, all kinds of animals that uh, aren't intended because this is really, really, really a non-selective type of trap. That's basically what I brought. And that uh, brings up the question of how many non-target species are actually caught in these traps. Can you uh, address that? Yeah, I can. Um, non-target animals are caught too often. Obviously, everyone would agree that if, a, if an animal that wasn't intended to get in the trap was caught, then that's too often right there. The problem is that most trappers, even though they are required to report non-target catches, most of them don't do it because all it does is create a paperwork and potential questions, and there's no, there's no real reason for it. They're out there in the wilderness by themselves. Nobody sees it. If the animal is uninjured, they'll release it and let it go. If it's injured, what they often will do, there's actually an expression that trappers have coined for themselves, which we know about. They, 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 they call it SSS, or shoot, shovel, and shut up. And so if the animal is injured, they don't think it can survive, they'll just kill it and bury it and be done with it. Mm -hmm. The only statistics we have come from former trappers who have seen the light and decided this is wrong, we don't want to do this anymore, and they have experience of years and years of trapping, and they come, they, they come and they tell us that anywhere between one and five anim non-target animals are caught for every animal that they actually mm -hmm. intended to catch.